On August 28, 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. prophesied that one day all people would join hands together and be free. That was over 50 years ago, and not much has changed. Today, there is a city in America that is genuinely trying to fulfill that dream in our lifetime. We dream of a city called Elgin. We dream one day of a city where the Founding Fathers' vision and laboring for hope and freedom for all people would not be in vain. We've had uh, uh, numerous uh, community conversations and I'm a big believer in having the, uh, the resident, uh, residents of our city become involved in the process and have uh, open and honest discussions. And these go back a number of years for us uh, with the police department, uh, members of the clergy within the city, uh, residents to sit down and have an honest discussion about crime, about racism in their city, and uh, to try to resolve our problems. And I think it's paid huge benefits for people. In my experience, uh, when people get the most frustrated is when they feel they don't have a voice. And if we can give them a voice and let them become part of the process, I think it makes it better for everybody. And at the end of the day, the process itself and the product will be much better. We dream one day of a city where truth is born through love. We dream one day of a city where injustice no longer exists because the demonstration of love for one another has blanketed our city. My thoughts were, this is achievable. And I think that was the beauty of it. This is achievable. We can do this in Elgin. I really think that that is the essence of the we dream of a city and injustice in any form. It's economic injustice, it's racial injustice, it's educational injustice, it's the injustice of not having a safe place to live, it's the injustice of not having enough food to eat, it is the injustice of not being able to, to make a living wage, it is the injustice of, of um, not being valued. Um, or another way to put that is the injustice of being marginalized um, in your own community. And so to dream of a city where um, we are not um, known for injustice, but rather for the love that we show one another and where everybody is important. The idea of a city where injustice no longer exists um, in a day and age where we see it all around us, uh, Unfortunately, there's rarely a week that goes by that we're not reminded of the kinds of injustices that we still deal with. Um, but, to, but to dream of a city where that doesn't happen and that doesn't take place. But also the demonstration of love um, for one another has replaced that. Um, you know, in our tradition, in, in, the, in the Christian tradition, um, love is not a feeling, it's not an emotion. It is those things, but much more deeper, it's... Um, it's an action. Uh, it is something we do. Uh, it is something that um, we put into practice. And that comes from the fact that we see God's love fully demonstrated. We dream one day of a city where no one goes hungry, have a safe and healthy living environment where every person has been educated, empowered, and given opportunity to have a successful life. I get the opportunity, uh, a humbling experience, to oversee and lead something called LoveElginDay.org. Over the past six years, uh, we've been able to see 30 to 40 churches, local churches in Elgin, partner together and to reach out uh, not only with the local churches, but also the city of Elgin, the police department, the fire department, the public works, and other organizations that are professional or medical uh, services to come together and basically uh, seek to demonstrate uh, an expression of God's love to people that are hopeless in some way and need hope. We dream one day of a city where all people are heirs to equality and justice. We dream one day of a city where in the process of renewing our own rightful place as people, 
that we make a difference in the lives of others. I think that this resonates with a lot of what our community is really like, and I feel like we're part of it, and everybody has, uh, like a, what we say in Spanish, granito de arena, a little piece of something that makes it so special. And I think that um, this is a wonderful poem because it really makes it real here. I think we all give a little bit of something to make it special and work together to create a lot of dreams to come true. We dream one day of a city where our children are never again stripped of their selfhood and robbed of their dignity because of the inequality and injustice. My parents were always really involved in the community, longtime volunteers in Elgin. And my dad used to always say, um, when you live in a community and you get resources from that community, you have to give back. And if you don't give back, to where you receive resources from, then you're a leech. So that was in the back of my mind. It's always been in the back of my mind. I have a unique perspective because um, where I serve as a patrol sergeant is on the bordering community. So I get to see for the past, since 1988, how the city of Elgin has developed and grown to practically be a city on the hill. So I've actually seen how uh, they are demonstrating uh, with proven results on the actual poem of a dream of a city. We dream one day of a city where faith in God dissolves discord and creates a beautiful symphony of love. I think when you are just honest with people, um, you lead with your heart and you, you recognize that you're out there and they recognize that you're out there with them. You're not telling them what to do, but you're with the, with the community, walking the blocks and talking with people and getting involved, that they'll start to trust will be built. Um, and once you have trust, then you can form relationships, and relationships is where real change happens. It doesn't matter what religion you are, it doesn't matter what color you are, you know, I think it's really important and I think it makes a difference, the fact that, um, you know, we work together. And we know you look beyond, you know, your outside shell, and it's more of who you are inside. What are you about? Who, you know, you want to do something, make a difference, make a change, you know, make it a positive change. We work together, we solve problems together, uh, we have people of different uh, cultures, we have people of different religions, all with the same goal in mind. They just want to lead a safe, honest, and productive life. We dream one day of a city where relationships of respect, trust, and honor is demonstrated between churches, municipalities, police, schools, social agencies, and interfaith groups that will say, what can we do together that we can't do apart? I remember us planning that first community conversation that met at Second Baptist Church and having, I don't know, 150, 200 people in that auditorium and just um, police and, and citizens sitting with one another around tables, talking with one another, hearing from one another, learning from one another. Um, that was a powerful moment. I think what's really overall impressive to me is that, you know, our community works together, that we could talk to the mayor, that we could talk to the chief of police, and they come to our meetings, they, they you know, work with us. And I think that that's what makes a difference. It keeps you motivated to, you know, continue and see what else can we do? How can we give back? How can we unite? And that, you know, people are always willing to share their time and efforts. And I think that's what sticks out to me and makes it feel like a positive place. And I love being here because of that. We dream one day of cities where black men, white men, brown men, Jews and Gentiles, Catholics and Protestants will be able to join hands in our loving cities and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are all free at last.